Hi, my name is Jennifer Ivaz. Let's get equipped in the supernatural. Hi there. I'm so excited to just just continue uh, helping you to get equipped in the supernatural, uh, the things of the Holy Spirit, the things of the Bible. And I just really uh, want to go over some some things about uh, the gift of working in miracles today, because that's really where my focus is for a whole lot of reasons. So thank you for hopping in and and joining us. Um, be sure to share this. Uh, if you're on Facebook, go ahead and share it with your your friends. If you're on um, you know another another social media uh, outlet, go ahead and share it with your other followers as well. And let's just get as many people, uh, you know, get as many people equipped in the supernatural as we can. And so um, I just want to, first of all, read to you out of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And this is, uh, you're familiar with it, I'm sure. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, uh, beginning um, with verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. And so what we're seeing here is that there's one Holy Spirit and yet he will grace uh, believers in Jesus. He will grace you and I who believe and, and love the Lord Jesus Christ. He will grace us with different miraculous gifts. And, and you'll probably notice, and maybe you can just let us know, maybe there's one that, that operates stronger in you than perhaps some others. I think I've probably tapped most of these gifts, if not all of them at some point, but there's a few that are a little bit stronger in me than perhaps some, some of the others in that list. And so so with, what I want to focus on is the gift of working of miracles. And just to give you some context some historical context, the reason the Apostle Paul had to distinguish things uh, like this to the Corinthian church is because these were uh, former you know, pagans and polytheists, and they believed in a lot of different gods before they became a Christian. And he had to really tell them that, hey, just because there's these different manifestations, it doesn't mean there's different spirits you know, that are causing that to happen. It's one Holy Spirit. So he's just bringing them into order and saying, hey, one Holy Spirit, many manifestations. And let me give you a list of, you know, some things that he does. And so that's why he distinguished it that way. But for us today, uh, the way that I think we need to, to look at this is that the Holy Spirit is the same yesterday, today and forever. So so he's graced them with these anointings, uh, you know, depending on what the need is, uh, the need of ministry is, what is what is needed at the moment. So he did it then and he's doing it now today. And if you, you know, if you remember, the Bible says that we are going from glory to glory. So these manifestations, they're just going to increase and they're going to, you know, they're just going to grow and not, not diminish, not, not get less and less. They actually get more and more. And perhaps you didn't realize this, but there are miracles, gifts of, of miracles uh, that we are seeing today that we didn't see 20, 30 years ago because we didn't need them. Uh, you know, there was no reason for them. Let me give you an example. I know somebody who can, who will pray for people and if they have uh, metal body parts, you know, that were, uh, you know, inserted surgically because maybe they needed, um, you know, some reinforcement in like their back or, or uh, something going on in their physical body and they needed a metal part. Well, she has prayed for people and that metal part uh, miraculously would turn back to bone. Now, I know that's crazy. I know that's really out there, but, you know, this is the miracle that God will frequently do uh, through her life. And we had somebody in our church experience that very miracle in her neck. She had something going on uh, in her neck uh, that had to do with metal, metal parts, and she got prayed for and she was healed. And so that's a gift of working in miracles. When it's a miracle, 
it defies the natural. It, you know, it's a supernatural uh, occurrence and it really defies the natural, the natural realm. Okay. And so, and, it, and yes, it does encompass healing and encompass encompasses a lot of things, but I really want to focus on healing right now. You know, the gift of working miracles more in the context of healing, although we can see the gift of working of miracles in a whole lot of dimensions and it does express in a lot of dimensions. For example, I have seen people get supernatural miracle financial deposits into their bank accounts, you know, like during some of our services here, some of our institutes here at Harvest Church in Turlock, California. And I've watched this thing happen. Um, more than once, several times actually. And people, you know, they'll look at their bank account and it'll be a certain amount and then they'll go back and look at it again or maybe the next day. And there'll be a weird increase that that there was no explanation um, or some some strange deposit will show up and they can't explain that deposit. And, it, and you know, after checking it out, there really is no uh, reasonable, rational explanation except for God did it. Um, the one that I enjoyed the most was the lady who had a tax bill that she couldn't pay. It was to the tune of $5,000. And during one of our institutes, the Holy Spirit dropped $5,000 into her bank account. And she just about lost it because it was so phenomenal. But, you know, it's interesting that, you know, the Lord will, will supplement your tax money uh, from time to time when you run short because he's a provider and he's a good one. And so that's the gift of working in miracles. And so, you know, it is a gift that doesn't deny. Now there's some, some elements that we should consider when we encounter this gift in operation. I like going to Acts chapter three and looking at what happened with Peter and John. It says, uh, I'll begin with verse one. It says, now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb. That's incredible. Lame from his mother's womb. And it's incredible because of what is, is about ready to happen. Okay. And so it was lame from his mother's womb and was carried, um, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful to ask alms from those who entered the temple. So basically he was a beggar. Okay. And that's what he did, you know, every single day. And he was a man now, uh, he, you know, wasn't, wasn't a child, wasn't, you know, a toddler. He was a full grown man and he was laid at the, at the temple gate um, every day to ask for alms from those who entered the temple. It says, who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms and fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us. So, so he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold, I do not have, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking, leaping and praising God. Now, how many of you have ever tried to replicate this miracle? Because we see it in the Bible. It's like, well, if it's here, I should be able to replicate it. I'm going to go. I'm going to go find somebody and I'm going to tell them to walk in Jesus name. And they're just going to do exactly what happened here. Well, I, I think we've all tried this and failed. At times, you know, if you're really into miracles, you know, we see these things, you're like, oh, I'm going to do this too, you know, and we probably all have tried it and failed. And, and perhaps the reason is because the anointing for the gift of working in miracles was not there. Okay. So you need to be able to discern anointings. All right. Uh, you know, be able to identify when the anointing for this, for the gift of working miracles is there and when it's not there. All right. And, and you also, you know, for those of you who are ministers like I am and you itinerate and you minister before congregations and you minister online in these formats is knowing how to cultivate, cultivate this anointing. Okay. And there really is something to that. And when you learn how to cultivate this anointing, learn how to tap into it, um, you know, learn how to, uh, engage the Holy Spirit for these kind of things, then what happens is you don't see, you know, you, you, you actually know when it's time to actually, you know, call somebody um, uh, out of their, their lame condition and into that, that walking condition when they haven't been able to do it before. Okay. And so, so this is one of those things. And, and what I've experienced is that the Holy Spirit's often used me to, to see miracles online. It's something that he's graced me with. And he's told me, tell the people that, uh, you know, just go ahead and tell the people that they will receive a miracle online 
when I minister, okay? And so I'm telling you to prepare your hearts to, to receive miracles when I'm ministering online. And so I can actually feel the moment I said that you got excited and your faith got activated. I could totally feel it and I could feel it coming off this uh, off the stream right now. And so what's fascinating uh, is that, that, and here's where I'm going, is that the gift of working of miracles is a miracle that doesn't deny you things, okay? Um, you know, medical science, you know, it can get you so far and I appreciate, oh, all of the advances in medical technology and stuff. I just really do. It seems like they're just uh, making such good good gains all the time and what they're discovering. Um, but, you know, it'll get you so far. Um, if you need certain levels of deliverance and inner healing, you know, inner healing and deliverance ministers, they can get you so far. But there are many times where we just need a miracle. Uh, you know, we need, we need that working of miracles. And the gift of working of miracles is actually power. Um, uh, there is a difference and a distinction between uh, when the, the anointing from the Holy Spirit comes upon us to heal. There's, you know, gifts of healings and that that actually feels a certain way. It has a certain flow to it and a certain feel to it. But then the gift of working of miracles feels like power. It's like I would describe it as sticking your fingers in an electric socket and actually having to great the grace to sustain it. That's what it feels like versus healing. Uh, the healing anointing is, is you know, it's, it's just different. It's not that that stick your finger in the in the light socket, you know, type of feel. And so with the gifts of healings, what I'll notice is that uh, when you release that healing anointing, let's say somebody has like terminal cancer. Well, the way it will express is that they might not get healed instantly. But what will happen is they'll, they're they're heading down de to death's door and all of a sudden they'll stop and they'll start going the other way. OK, and that's really like the gifts of healings in operation. They just be, kind of begin to turn around when they were they were sliding. They were sliding out of this earth is what happens. And so so whereas the gift of working in miracles, it'll be like like this almost like this instant thing will happen uh, with them. And you say, well, well, why don't we just, you know, stay over in that realm? I can't always, I can't always determine what the Holy Spirit is going to do. I've learned to cultivate some things. I've learned that, you know, um, uh, he will express more in one way in certain individuals than he will the other way. Um, I have learned to recognize, uh, you know, when I'm in meetings, I, there's this, the way it feels is, and it is actually the gift of working in miracles, but when he's getting ready to help somebody start walking, that couldn't walk or was uh, not walking well or not walking right. Um, you know what I'll feel? It'll feel like this this river will start to flow behind me and 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 start flowing behind me. And I'll it, it's supernatural, but I'll feel this flow kind of coming behind me and kind of uh, working through me and, and everything. And I'll feel this thing happen. And I know if I can get that that person who uh, can't walk, if I can get them in that flow that I feel, if I can get them walking right along in that river that they may feel or not feel, they may see, they may not see, that by the time we're all done that night, they're going to start walking. And I've seen this happen again and again and again, but I, it has a certain feel to it. And I know that's the one that gets people to walk when they can't walk. Okay. Um, by the way, somebody has a torn shoulder, um, like a I think it's a rotator cuff or something like that. I can feel something happening in somebody's shoulder right now. So I want you to just go ahead and start moving it, move it to the front, move it to the back. And just, I just uh, command your shoulder to just repair right here in the name of Jesus. Okay. Yeah. Right there. Okay. I feel the power of God shooting out right now over the airways right there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and lift it up, lift it up, go ahead and stretch. There you go. Go ahead and do that right now. I've seen that right there. Okay. Get get the shoulder. I feel the anointing, friends. Okay. Somebody's going to start talking to me about this. All right. So, so here's where I'm going. Okay. There is this miracle. I have seen this miracle um, and I have seen it online. And you can see on the banners right here, this supernatural weight loss that we have coming up in January. Okay. So it's, it's part deliverance. It's part teaching and it's part the gift of working in miracles. And, you know, I, I will never promise some somebody something that can't be delivered. So I always put a disclaimer, but it is true. I have seen people melt right in front of my eyes. OK, um, I'm not going to say that that happens every time, but I have seen it. 
but even online, I've seen miracle after miracle after miracle and healing where people were stuck. They could not break through the weight barrier. And then all of a sudden they started turning the other way and they started finally losing the weight in a healthy manner. Okay. So what I have found with the weight loss stuff. Okay. And the banner you see on the banner that there's a couple different um, places to go, depending on what country you're, you're in. We distinguish Australia from the rest of the world um, just so that you can just pay an AUD rather than, you know, do that, the nasty conversion that happens with all of you. So, so anyway, there's a different registration for Australians. Okay. But anyway, when it comes to supernatural weight loss, and I stumbled on this miracle um, quite by accident. Okay. It was a total accident. I've explained it before. It just like came on me and I just understood. Um, uh, to be honest, I have not had that struggle. It's not like I have this testimony and how I broke through or anything like that. That's not my struggle, but the Lord did show me from scripture and I've validated it with so many people of what happens to people when they cannot break through the weight barrier. Okay. There's, there's uh, emotional points that they've got to work through. There's reasons why they put on the weight. Um, you know, there's there's all sorts of stuff. Some people, they just need healing, like their physiology has just crashed. And, you know, and the chemical balances and stuff are just not not helpful. They're harmful and all sorts of stuff. But but we need to, like, you know, go after it uh, in a very concentrated way. And so if I didn't see the miracle after miracle after miracle, and especially those that are now able to step into their God assignments because now they have the strength and the energy and, and, you know, they're at a healthier place, uh, you know, because none of this is about vanity. None of this is about, you know, it's just, I just, that's just not my thing. Okay. You know, I, this is all about kingdom purposes and putting Jesus first. And if your body's not cooperating with you and you cannot do what God has called you to do, then you need a breakthrough. And so this is why, um, you know, I want to talk to you about how the gift of working in miracles, it works is because a lot of people don't think that God cares that much about helping you through that um, or helping you through anything that matter. I've seen people get their hair back. I've seen, you know, um, for men, it's more of a distinguishing thing. It's not as huge of a deal. But for women, when you have um, a female, you know, bald patches in your head, uh, you know, it's just like, like, it's it's just gruesome. Okay. And, and I've seen people get their hair back. Um, you know, I've seen their skin clear up. I've seen all sorts of stuff happen so that people, you know, are not constantly condemning themselves and keeping them in, keeping themselves in the shadows when God's called them to the front, uh, you know. And so so these are the things that, you know, we're, we're going to talk about supernatural weight loss, but I'm sure we'll go into some of these other stuff. You know, there's always seems to be like the hair stuff and the skin and, and different things, uh, you know, but this is about your purpose. This is about your purpose. And this is the miracle that the Lord is releasing uh, to people. And he's helping you also get free from your bondage to food. Um, you know, those that have comfort eating um, uh, issues who binge, uh, you know, those kind of things. Uh, you know, these are the things the Lord wants to settle out with you. It's it's um, one of the things that I have really been, uh, you know, hitting on is like we've been praying for probably since COVID hit that God would hit heal our land. We've been praying into this, that God would heal our land. And I came to the realization, well, if he's going to heal the land, he has to heal you. He has to heal me because um, when when man fell, land fell. And so in order for land to be restored, mankind has to be restored. You know, it's kind of it's pretty cyclical, but there's something about the Lord wanting to heal you. And even in uh, these dimensions. OK. All right. Peggy says healing in left shoulder. Praise the Lord. I see that, Peggy. Awesome. Um, uh, she's on Facebook. Uh, so I'm seeing it come through the Facebook. All right. And um, <laughs> all right. And so so anyway, this is what I want to talk to you about is the gift of working in miracles. And I want to share with you just how excited I am that the Lord is doing this specific miracle. Now, again, January, um, we do have a course coming up. Um, it may, it may, you may not need it. Um, I have like a pretty cheesy YouTube video and I've had a lot of people like say that that worked for them and that was good. So, so check that out first. Okay. If that's all you need, great. But if you need extra, 
I want you to join us in January. Um, and you can see all the registration links in the banner there. Um, we'll, we'll drop them. They're all over my Facebook page or my social media, okay? Uh, but it is the gift of working in miracles. And I wanted you to understand how it works. And I wanted you to understand that it is uh, an anointing that doesn't deny you. Okay. All right. God is that good. The Holy Spirit is that good. And uh, look forward to seeing you next time. God bless.